Hey everyone, let's implement the binary search algorithm on the binary tree structure. I have a binary tree representation on the diagram on the right, and I have some pre-existing code on the left, which is a basic binary tree class. And the initialization and creation of all the values for the binary tree that you see on the right. Additionally to creating the add function, we also have an in order list function, uh, which we can use to visualize all the numbers in our binary tree. So let's execute the current program we have to see all the numbers that we expect to have on the tree on the right. As you can see, all the numbers, which show up in the output, are also in the binary tree diagram on the right. Let's add the search function to the binary tree class and visualize how it works in the diagram on the right. So let's create a function called search, which takes in a value which we are looking for. We have to think of all the base cases one by one in this recursive definition of a binary tree. So the first thing we do is we make sure that the binary tree doesn't carry the value itself. Looking at the diagram, we see that we can have an empty binary tree. So in this case, there is no sense in looking either to the left child or the right child. And we create a case to catch this right at the start. So we say if self.value equals none, then we know the tree is empty and thus the value we are looking for is not there. So we can return false. The second option is that the tree does have a value, which we can see right here. The tree might have a value of 13 and could have a value of anything else. Since the tree is not empty, we must check whether the value of the tree is not equal to the value we are looking for. And if it is, we can return true. So let's do so. If our value, or the value that the tree is carrying, is equal to the value we are looking for, then we return true, since we found our value. Perfect. If the value of the tree is not the value we are looking for, and we don't return true, we gotta perform some checks. Just like in a diagram, the tree can have two child values. So we must now check whether the value must move left or right. Looking at the diagram of our full tree, we can remind ourselves of the rules of a binary tree. We see that all the values on the left are smaller than 13, and we see that all the values on the right are larger than 13. So when we are looking for a value, we must check if the value we are looking for is smaller than the value, in this case 13, then we must look for our value in the left side of the tree. Otherwise, we can look for the value on the right side of the tree. So let's look at our code and see how we can do so. So if the value is smaller than the value of the tree, we return either that the left side doesn't exist, and if it does exist, we need to ask the left tree whether it carries that value. So we say self.left, dot search and we pass our value. The second option is that the value we are looking for is not smaller than the value of the current tree. So let's now implement the same thing for the right side. For the right side, we also say return a Boolean value. If the right size does not exist, we return false. And if it does exist, we gotta evaluate whether the right side contains our value. So when we now search for a value in our binary tree, we check whether the tree has a value at all. If it does, we check whether the value we are looking for is the value of the tree. If that is not the case, we check whether we can find the value we are looking for in our left child tree. If the value we are looking for is larger than the value of our current tree, we know that we may find our value in the right child tree, which is over here. Let's now run the search function we created and show how it works on the right. Tree.search for the value seven. If we then run our program, we see the value true because seven does exist in our tree. Let's take a value that doesn't exist in the tree to make sure that works as well. Let's take the value negative three and run our code. As you can see, the value negative three is not found in our tree, so it seems to work correctly. Let's look for our value seven again and look at the tree diagram on the right to see how it works visually. So we have this entire tree on the right, which we created using this section over here. Now imagine we ask this tree to search for the value seven. The tree will evaluate if the number 13 being its own value. Does my value exist? Yes, it does, because it's 13. So we don't do anything. Then we check, is the value we are looking for equal to 13? The answer is no, since we are looking for seven. 
We then check whether the value we are looking for is smaller than the value 13, which it is because 7 is smaller than 13. So that means we choose to go to the left to search for our value. Since the left side does exist, because it's 10, we call search on the left side, asking this 10 whether its tree contains the value 7. Looking at the value 10, the value 10 does exist, the value 10 is not equal to the value 7, but 7 is once again smaller than 10, so we know that we must go to the left. We also know the left node exists, since it's 4, and thus we ask whether 4 can search for 7 in its tree. Now we're looking for the value 7 in this tree, so we once again ask, is the value 4 of our tree equal to none? No. Is the value 4 equal to 7? No. Is the value 7 smaller than 4? No. Thus we go to the right side, and then we check if the right side isn't equal to none, which it isn't because it's a 7, then we ask the right side whether it contains our value. Now we are at the tree that has the value 7, and for the tree we once again perform our search, right here. We check whether the value 7 is equal to none, which it's not, and then we check whether the value 7 is equal to the value 7 we are looking for, and it is. And thus the tree returns true. This true then gets returned to the value 4's search call on the right, and the right tree did exist because it was a 7, and we found the true here. So this true cascades back up to our 10. In our 10, we confirm that the left tree existed, and we search for it in the left tree, and we know that we found it in the left tree, since our 4 confirms that it's found, so we can send that information back up to 13. Finally, for 13, we also confirmed that 7 would have to be in the left tree, we confirmed that the left side was none because it was a 10, and we know from asking the left side that this one found the 7. So let's push the fact that we found it back up to 13. Since 13 was the root of our tree, this true result of finding the 7 will get returned over here. And that is why we see true in the output when the 7 was found. I hope this video showed you how to code and understand the binary search algorithm for a binary tree structure. If it did, please leave a like. And if you would like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. Peace.